Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio from AEC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is how to tell if you have a bad burnout compressor. So it's really important that you condemn a compressor that's, that's actually bad. I just want to make sure that technicians have, without a doubt, confirmed that that compressor actually is burnout. So I'm going to show you how to measure the windings with our multimeter to see if you're, you're shorted the ground or if the, the windings are open or, you know, maybe there's a, another problem, you know, maybe the, it's just the thermal limit is open. So I want to go over the different tips there and I'm going to show you a cut open scroll compressor that actually is burned out and just kind of show you the, what the inside looks like. Uh, we also have our rotary compressor. We're going to be checking that in a mini split unit. So that's a three phase compressor versus a versus a single phase compressor here. And then we also have a reciprocating compressor inside this outdoor unit. So we're going to be going over that shortly. I just want to take this opportunity to make sure that you check out our website and all the free resources we have there, such as the articles, the quick tips, the quizzes, the podcast, the calculators, a bunch of different resources, Q&A, all kinds of stuff there. So make sure you check that out at acservicetech.com. Now we're gonna go ahead and get started. So now we're into the outdoor unit. And before you do any testing on a compressor, you wanna make sure that you have the power coming into the contactor is off and you've tested it with your multimeter. In this case, you can see that we don't even have it connected just cause this is an older uh, pulled out unit. But the next thing that you wanna do is you wanna disconnect your compressor wires. Now in this case, you have a completely open access to get into this compressor compartment. In normal cases, it's not that easy. You may be able to get it down to it from down low. You may be able to take the, the condenser fan off the top, but it's just not easy. And you want to start your diagnosis up here at the wires anyway. So you just identify the wires that are heading down to the compressor. And you can see that this is connected to the Herm terminal. So we're going to go ahead and pull that off. and. We can see that this yellow wire connects right here and this black wire connects right there. So we're going to go ahead and disconnect those. We have our multimeter set on resistance, so we're going to be measuring in ohms. And you also want to make sure that your connections are at least not corroded when you're attaching your alligator clips to them. So we can go ahead and just clip to these. What I'm first going to do is I'm just going to measure across the windings. And right here between black and yellow, we have 0.6. And between black and blue, we have 1.8, 1.7. And between our blue and our yellow, we're measuring 2.2. So what you have is 0.6 between the yellow and black and that would indicate that that's your that's your lowest resistance reading so so you know that you have your common and run on that one and then you have your black and the blue and that was reading 1.7 ohms of resistance so you know that that's your your second lowest uh, pair so you know that your black is your common your yellow would be your your run and your blue would be the start terminal because between blue and yellow right here we have 2.2 ohms of resistance so you take 0 0.6 plus 1.7 and you have 2.3 we measure 2.2 so we're, we're very close but now this isn't going to tell you anything other than you know your your common to run tab on your compressor and your common to start equal what your resistance should be across from your blue to your yellow but in the case of it shorting, it's either going to touch the ground cabinet or it's going to be opening up. And in here, if we know that our black is our common, we already know that our thermal limit is intact. And I have a thermal limit to show you. Here's a thermal limit on the inside of a blower motor. So it looks very similar on a compressor and it's a clicks on. It just sandwiches right up against the motor windings on the inside of the compressor. You can't get to this on these larger compressors. You can get to a compressor protector on the outside of a small fractional horsepower compressor. But on these larger ones, this is on the inside. So if the motor had a hard time start starting up and just not it's not starting, the windings will get heated up and this will be there to protect it from overheating. You don't want the resin on the outside of each of these wire loops to, to melt down because then each of these wires would touch and then it would end up shorting out. So this is a protection device. So if you don't measure any resistance between any of these pairs, it could be that this is open and your compressor is hot. 
So you gotta wait for that to cool down or you can cool it down with water while the this power is definitely off. Make sure the power's off and then you can cool it down uh, and then go ahead and test it again. It could be that one of your other, one of the windings has, has burnt apart and is open. So that could be the case. In order to see if your compressor is short at the ground, you just clean off a little piece of copper on your tube right here. Remember that you have your copper tube brazed into your compressor, so the copper tube's a great spot to check to make sure that you're not short at the ground. You can check any one of these wires as long as you've already checked the pairs and they have good resistance values between them. You only have to check one. However, you see I'm checking all three just, to, just for the sake of checking it. So we know that this compressor is not short at the ground because we're reading OL, which means open limit or open line. If you ever measured a resistance value that was in kilo ohms or, or mega ohms between these, or if it just read OL like that, then you still want to check your compressor plug down at the bottom. You always start with your diagnosis up here with the wires, but at this point, if we measured OL, we're going to go ahead down here to the actual plug. And you want to be real careful when pulling this plug out and be aware, wear safety glasses. You know, some plugs end up leaking. You can actually have all of the refrigerant leak right out of that electrical connection down there. So I'm going to take you for an up close shot of that. So the reciprocating has a cover over it. This is a reciprocating compressor, but the scroll compressors usually just have the plug by itself. And you wanna take care when you're pulling this plug out because this, this right here, you could have uh, the, this pop open and have the refrigerant come out in this area. This is a weak spot for the compressor, so make sure you're real careful with that. And what we wanna do is we wanna inspect the plug to make sure that uh, there's no burn marks. It's not melted or, or anything like that. It looks like it's going to be tight when you push it in. Here's an example of a plug that I pulled out of a bad compressor where it actually lost the terminal. As you can see right there, you can see there's a little bit of water damage as well. So water got in there. Uh, so that, that was a bad compressor that actually lost one of its lugs. Now, if, if part of the lug is, is worn back due to maybe, the, maybe it's melted, then you have some type of issue with either high current or a loose connection. And you can use something like this, which is a uh, compressor lug uh, repair kit. So you're, you're basically, you're tightening this on in order to get your, your wire off of there. Uh, but this is a, a worst case scenario. It's, it's definitely a lot better to have your plug on there because you're going to be able to seal your moisture. You would really need to seal this cover if you tried to, to use a repair piece uh, because there is no real seal. There's just this, this little, little piece back here and that is it. So You want to do a good job diagnosing your compressor. Make sure that it's not just a problem with the plug and not just a loose connection here. You can always replace the plug assembly with a new one such as this right here. It's the same size. It would seal up real well. So make sure that you do a good job diagnosing your actual compressor. And now I want to take you over to a scroll compressor that has shorted the ground. This scroll compressor is shorted the ground and you see that we're reading 2.7 ohms of resistance from the winding over to our tube right here. So that's a big problem as well. If we were checking the pairs on this particular compressor, we're reading over in kilo ohms, so 2.6 kilo ohms. So, so this compressor is going to burn out and there's going to be a big problem for the refrigerant and the acidity within the system. And I just want to show you what the inside of a burnout compressor looks like. This is a burned out compressor. We removed the scrolls out of here and you can see all of this black soot that's on the inside of here. And that's what's <laughs> throughout the line set and the, the evaporator coil, the condenser coil, because the refrigerant is still moving through the whole system when a compressor burns out. So, so that's what it looks like on the inside. Remember that if you even replace the whole outdoor unit, you're still gonna have some of this stuff on the, in the line set and at the evaporator coil. You can clean the line set, but you can't really clean the evaporator coil itself. So just keep that in mind. Here we have a mini split compressor and on this one it's three phase and all of the pairs of wires are going to be matching on this. So remember that if you ever take this cap off you have to put the, the sealant around this again to seal it up. But right here before you ever take these wires off you can take a picture of that of what it looks like. But we're just going to go ahead and pull these off. Our multimeter set on resistance and we're measuring, let's see here, one ohm of resistance there, one ohm there, and one ohm there. 
So we have matching pairs, which is good. And we also want to check to our ground right here. So you got to remember that a three phase motor is going to have matching resistance readings between all three pairs. And then any of those three pairs to ground should be reading OL, which means open line. And that means that it is not connected to ground. The windings are not short of the ground. So this is what it should look like. If you want to learn more about HVACR troubleshooting, check out our website at acsurfacetech.com. We have a ton of free resources there, such as our articles, our quick tips, our Q&A, our calculators, our quizzes. So make sure to check those out. We also have products available there, such as our Refrigerant Charging and Service Procedures for Air Conditioning book. We also have that in the ebook format, and we also have a workbook and quick reference cards. The sample pages and full outline are at acservicestick.com slash acbook. We also have our English and Spanish ebooks at the Apple Bookstore and also on Google Play. We also have it available over at our website at acservicestick.com. We also have our physical products available over at Amazon as well as eBay. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.